Hey everyone, it's Colin with Legalized Mr. Productions. Thank you for joining me and welcome. And today we're going to be doing the second part of Mephiston step-by-step -step tutorial. And we're going to be doing the red armor for Mephiston, Chief Librarian of the Blood Angels. Uh, we did the cloaks last time. This is going to be a totally different red. And we have like just a bunch of random parts to do in this red. Uh, his foot... Uh, lower part of his leg and foot in there. Uh, this kind of section of armor in here bef between the glove and the shoulder pad. We're going to do this whole kind of chest area, even though we're going to be highlighting it differently from the rest of the armor. Uh, we're still going to do the same, the same base coat there. Um, and then we're going to base coat his shoulder pads because there's some red peeking through on the skull pad and then obviously just the, on the standard blood angels pad there's going to be uh those red areas uh, his backpack is going to be red and then his right arm also has a segment of red armor so they're very small segments um but obviously it's important to get you know his armor colored down this is uh my blood angels armor recipe i'll be doing a full tutorial so you can see kind of the whole thing come together uh, at a later date but for now um, i'll run through the paints that we're going to use i'm going to be using ink glazing uh, for this armor but we're going to be ink glazing over a colored base coat and so we're going to base coat with this dark shadow flesh which is a very dark uh, kind of crimson purpley red then red from AK, these are all from AK figure. It was a great range, super matte, um, really, really, really fantastic paints. Uh, so vermilion cadmium red, this is a very strong red. Then we're going to do a highlight with the pale red. And this is very pink, very, very pink. But that's okay because then we'll go back and we'll do the shadows with the cheekbone glaze. And this is a very dark, this is almost purple. It has a little bit of red in it, but this is this is very much purple, violet, very dark. So we're keeping this whole palette in this purplish, reddish, but it's going very much up to pink. This pale red, um, can't really see it as well through the through the bottle, you can see kind of in the cap there how pale that is. It's very pink. Um, but that's okay because then we're going to come back with this Scale 75 Ink Tense Red. Uh, it's very strong, but it's also very transparent. So um, when we do this over the colored pre-shade, it's going to resaturate the armor, but it's going to keep it's going to keep the 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 shadows and the highlights and everything those are going to keep their tones so it's why i don't like doing i don't like doing ink over like a black and white pre-shade uh because i mean for a number of reasons but mostly because you you it's just one tone if you're just doing like a red ink or red paint over a black and white pre-shade you're only getting that tone of of red. There's no, there's nothing underneath it. There's nothing going on. Um, this way, if you do kind of a, a colored pre-shade, then what you get is you get that, the difference in tone, you get that visual interest before you even put the ink on. And that's what we're going for. So this is uh, the dark shadow flesh from AK figure and I'm moving quick with this tutorial so like the Agrel and Badlands technical that I used on the, the base is still drying <laughs> uh, but you can see this is a very you know very crimson red this dries dark it dries matte um, so that's a good that's a good starting point for us and we're going to get just, 
just kind of the sides of this because the main skull is going to be gold. So. You know, we don't need to shade the whole thing. Obviously, those wings are going to be white. And I've left these on the sprue just because when I clip these off the sprue, I can just touch up that gold. I just paint that gold. It's not, it's not a big deal. Same thing with the bottom of this backpack. I can just come in and just clip that off and touch that up. Uh, but it's just way easier to hold these pieces, uh, having them separate. And usually I'd like do a little pin and kind of get them on to... Um, you know, kind of a spare base that I would be using to hold them while I was painting them. Um, but if you can just leave it on the screw like that, man, I just saved myself a ton of time by not by not doing a bunch of pins and every and everything like that. So, you know, anywhere that I can save time, you can see how matte. That dries. Can you see that? I love these paints. I love these AK, these AK figure paints. The tricky part about painting this stuff in sub assemblies is you have to remember where the light is coming from. Like this is just blue tacked onto a base, but this arm is going to be, you know, situated like that when it's on the model. So we always want to keep that in mind. Always want to keep that in mind when we're painting in sub-assemblies. It's, it's, it's one of the most challenging parts of whoop, painting in sub-assemblies is being mindful of where, where the light is going to fall on the model. So you see we use Tamiya tape to mask off the robe that we painted last time. And... I don't, Sorry, Siri woke up for some reason. Um, so we use that Tamiya tape. I gloss varnish the robes before I gloss varnish the robes before I before I mask them off, and that helps lower that helps lower the tension. Ooh. Come on. Helps lower the surface tension just in, in, just to make sure that we're not getting any peeling, we're not getting anything weird happening with the tape. Um, you know, I'll still base coat this stuff red, even though I'm probably just going to paint over it black. But I just want to be sure. What I don't want to have happen is I don't want to have to come back later and do this red again because uh, it is a whoops, it is a five-step process and it can't really be done with a brush. So. I mean, I'm sure you could do it with a brush. It would just be much, much, much harder. So, go for the mid-tone, which is this red, this vermilion cadmium red. And this is a true, this is a strong, strong red. This is, this is a really nice color. Um... It's a great mid-tone. Uh, this is a similar progression that we use for Sister Amalia Novena uh, without the ink glaze portion of the, of the recipe. Because uh, I wanted that model to be a little bit more a little bit more matte, a little bit more dark, I think, than um, oops, that's a little much, but This is also very, very thin, so I was just getting a little bit impatient with it. But we want to build it up just a little bit. And remember, really only the front part of his foot is going to be showing. So we're not going to go too crazy. Now let's keep in mind, this is going to be facing kind of like that when it's on the model. So when we're doing our highlights, make sure to keep that in mind. So that we don't highlight the wrong part of the model, and I'm going to leave that bottom just in that in that dark shadow flesh. Uh, we're just going to leave that there because we really want strong contrasts on this model, and 
particular, on the piston in particular, we really, really want those strong contrasts. And because we're going to be doing the ink glaze, the stronger the contrast, the more that ink glaze is really going to pop, the more the red is going to pop. So, um, you know, here we want to make sure to hit the top of the pad. Kind of dry that out a little bit, hit it again. And now we're going to be coming back through. So it's a five paint process, but the armor is really like, let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. It's really like a six-ish, about a six-step process to get the armor to where I like it to be. Um, but that's okay. It's worth it in the end because it looks really cool. And it has that red tone, that really rich Blood Angels red. This is the this is the armor recipe that I'll be using for my personal army, for my Blood Angels army. Um, so this is good practice. <laughs> uh, also, this is good practice for me too. I'll be uh, this model will be given away at the end of this tutorial. This one's for the Patreon, um, but. The I have a, a client that commissioned me to paint a Mephiston, and then um, you know obviously I'll be painting one for myself. Uh, so I'll actually be painting this model three times uh, this month, probably. I don't know if I'll get to mine this month uh, unless I paint it alongside the one that uh, my friend commissioned from from me. If I do them both at the same time, which I might do, uh, then I'll paint and I'll get my own done at the same time. But if not, it's going to be, it's probably going to be a little while. But this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous sculpt. So the temptation is certainly there to, to do it at the same time. And I mentioned, I already mentioned that we're going to be doing the musculature the musculature on his chest is going to be done a little differently. Um, we're going to shade that and highlight that a little differently than we are the rest of the model. Um, just to, again, to get another a different kind of take on the red and to set those sections of armor apart from just his red armor. And, but Again, we're going through, we're going to go through the same progression. We're going to start at the same spot because then we can kind of move, we can kind of move sideways off of that, off of that red with different, um, different washes and stuff like that and different highlight colors. We can, we can kind of move laterally off that red to get a little bit different look. Um, and that'll obviously be done. All that musculature and stuff will be done with the brush. This is the uh, pale red from AK and this is very pink this is going to be let me get that and really just hit that highlight we want that highlight to be pronounced uh, we're not going to hit the sides of that with the pale red But we are going to hit the top. So you can see how nice that, that highlight is, but it is pink. Right? That is a very pink highlight. And I don't like pink red. I don't like orange red. I don't like pink red. Um, I like red red. But we want that to be kind of an extreme pink highlight. Because when we glaze it over, if we don't have a lot of differentiation between shadow and highlight, when we do that ink glaze, it'll all just turn one color. It'll all just turn that red ink kind of glaze color. And we don't want that. We want, we want it to be a nice transition. So here we're just gonna hit kind of the top of that elbow and the middle of that arm there, but really saturated, really get a good highlight on that. So you can see there, we have like that top part of the elbow, the highest point, 
but then coming back down into that shadow flesh. And we're going to deepen those shadows even more. So that's a great, that was, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that arm there. Um, not a hundred percent happy with the shoulder pad, but, um, but that's okay. It's good enough. Um, another nice thing about the ink glaze is that it, it covers a lot of, <laughs> covers a lot of mistakes. Um, it just evens out the transition. So same, same progression that we would do for, you know, just highlighting the space screen, top of the backpack, right? And then I'm going to get the top of that little circular thing as well, leaving the shadow kind of in the middle there. And we'll come back and accentuate that anyway. So real simple highlight on that. And then where did my paper towel go? Sorry. This is a great model. I'm super happy right now. I mean, I'm happy when I'm painting Blood Angels in general, but this is a beautiful, beautiful model. So yeah, we're going to hit the top of this elbow. Kind of his pecs. A little bit on the abs. A little bit on the front of the gorget there. And then coming under here, you know, I realize now I missed that kind of that regular red, that vermilion cadmium red on his foot down here, but that's okay. I'm just going to hit that with that pale red to get that highlight. And that's all right. That, that foot is back kind of buried underneath there. That's a little uneven. So I'm going to kind of smooth it out a little bit. There we go. His foot's kind of buried under there. Um, the fact that I missed that highlight, you know, I'm not going to let that ruin my day. I'm definitely not going to go back and switch colors because I'll still get the, I'll still get the red that I want, uh, with the ink glaze without having to do that progression again. Um, it's not worth the time. So make an executive decision to just forge ahead. And now we're going to get this cheekbone glaze. And this is dark. This is, we're going to make sure that it's thin because we don't, this is going to be, I mean, as the name kind of suggests, we want this to be a glaze. We don't want this to be uh, super thick and, and really take over. So you can see here how thin that is. Very, very thin, right? Because then we're going to basically flip this upside down, like on the, on the backpack, we'll flip it upside down and spray that from underneath, get that triangle a little bit. And then really just, you see how much we, we sharpen those shadows. That's exactly what we want to do. So coming again from underneath, really sharpen those shadows so now we have like you can see on the backpack this is probably going to be hidden because it looks so good um <laughs> i'm so happy with this that uh you know with my luck it'll be hidden behind uh his psychic hood but that's okay so we have that really nice deep purple and then that's going to shade all the way up to that pink and that's exactly what we want deep purple whoop all the way up to pink that is exactly, exactly, exactly what I want with that. And then on these uh, shoulder pads, we're just going to hit the corners a little bit because that's where, you know, we're going from dark to light. Just going to hit those, those corners. So those corners go from that purple all the way up to that pink on the top there. Uh, for this shoe, you know, we'll get the inside of the toe. This is really, you know... I don't know if that's 100% necessary, but I like doing it, so we'll do it. 
And so we're really, you know, we still have some of that mid-tone. This is a more extreme highlight than if we were actually using this as our armor color. We would want more, of, obviously, we'd want more of that mid-tone to shine through. But because we're just kind of laying, and again, we're going to come straight from underneath where this would be on the model. Coming straight from underneath with that glaze to darken those shadows. Perfect. So now we have that really dark purple whoop, all the way up through that kind of pinkish red. So it's kind of like a zenithal highlight. It's kind of like that extreme black to white highlight, except we're using paint and we're using color to get that. And then we really want to get, we really want to hit that musculature from underneath. And you can see how nicely, how much more nicely that's defined now that um now that we did that right so it's not so that's defined a lot better than it was you know a minute a minute ago perfect really really like that really happy with that i'm actually going to try and get in there next to these skulls just a little bit spraying kind of sideways onto the side of those skulls now those skulls aren't going to be red those are going to be a different color but i wanted to really get a little bit of shadow on the top there uh, to really accentuate kind of the center area of his chest here, which is going to draw everything to the head. Um, there's a lot going on around his head anyway, so it doesn't need a whole lot of help. The sculpt does a lot of the work. Then we're going to spray sideways kind of into the sides of the abs here and really get that musculature defined really well. And here, this is all going to be in shadow, so we want to make sure to get a nice glaze on the inside part of this leg under here, and then a nice glaze kind of over here as well. But leave that highlight because the next step, the next step is really where that magic happens. This is the part. This this is the exciting part. <laughs> this is the part I love. So we're just a little bit of water because this stuff is really, really, really pigment heavy. This stuff, these, these inks from scale 75 are so pigment rich. Um, you can thin these forever. Now you can put one drop of this in a, in a, you know, pint glass and the pint glass will turn red. Uh, but we want it to be, we want it to be heavy. Um, but it's still transparent. I, I just love I just love these inks. Uh, they make an ink tense set of inks. So here you can see I, I did a couple I did a couple drops of water and like four or five drops of this ink. And so you can see here like how how red, just how rich and red these inks are. And it's and it's kind of thin a little. But I mean, that is red. So I might add, I might add another brush worth of water to that just to kind of thin it out just a little bit more. And we want to be real light. If we have to come back and do two or three kind of passes with this, that's fine. We don't want to shoot a bunch of this at once. I don't want to just hose, hose the model with this. So you can see here, so you can see here how it's still, it's thin. You can see once we start to build it up, you can see how rich that gets. And that's, that's exactly what we want. You can also see if I just hose this out, what happens, right? If I just pull back on that trigger, we're getting spider webs and bleeding everywhere. So sure that needle is seated so what I want is just keep it moving and just a nice easy glaze pull it back let it dry then go back in kind of rich make it a little richen it up make it a little richer then go back in I can always go back in and do another little glaze right if I do this and I just start hosing away I'm screwed and I have to start over. 
Patience, patience, patience. This is this requires a little bit of touch, but it does pay off because, and you'll see exactly why. Uh, we'll do we'll do the let's do the backpack first because that's going to be um, that's going to be really cool to see. So we're going to go over the the shadows as well. We're not going to flip this upside down and glaze in there, but we're going to get we're going to glaze. We're going to do an all over glaze to get that tone that really strong red tone into the model, into this, into this armor. So starting just real quick, just, and you can see how that turned those shadows are a little bit more red. This is still pink up here, but it's starting to get a little bit richer. Now we're going to let that, we're going to leave it for a second, let it dry, come back in. Look at that difference. So we still, so now we have this really nice, this really nice blood arterial red, right? That is a really nice red. I love it. I'm super happy with it. Um, it. Took me a while to figure out, so <laughs> I better love it. Uh, but we have these beautiful shadows, um, and then when we matte varnish this, all that that satin will go away. Um, and that'll just accentuate that even more. But you can see even on just this little circle here, we have this really nice red going down to this deep kind of purplish red, but it's still red because we put that red glaze over the top. It's still red. It's not that kind of purple color anymore. Um, those shadows on the bottom of those kind of nodes on the backpack are red, but they're just really dark, interesting red going up to really vibrant red red. Um, and that's exactly what we want. That's that Blood Angels red. Get the shoe. And on little parts like these, it's hard for me to be hard for me to be patient because I just want to move on. But you know, when I get impatient, that's when that's when mistakes happen, and that's when I'm not happy. So and you can see there again. Just got a really nice, really nice red, but then we have those killer shadows as well. We'll hit this, hit the shoulder pad. And we're making sure that we're hitting those shadow areas. We're hitting those areas that are just that dark purple because we want to inject that red tone into those shadows. This this red ink isn't going to overpower. I mean, you know, if you put enough, if you go crazy and put enough coats on, it'll overpower the purple, but um, you'd really have to work at it. If you're just doing a few thin coats over the purple, it's not going to, it's not going to obliterate that purple. It's just going to make it a little bit red. But you can see like, that's not pink anymore. That's red, right? That went from, this is, this is red. But do we have that really nice? I'm actually gonna hit it one more time because it was so pink to start with. But really nice. Red. Red. Again, pink to purple. Come in with that red ink real quick. Make it, oop, 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 see, I got a little, got a little trigger happy. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little uneven on the bottom of that, on the bottom of that elbow. It's a little uneven because I got a little trigger happy. But thank God it was on the bottom of that elbow. And even then, it's not, it's not major, but... And where you can see, hear me just kind of spraying air. That's just a, I want each layer to be dry before I, before I go in for another, another spritz. And I don't know why this is struggling. This is really thin. Oh. 
can always just clean the tip, just make sure. There we go. Ooh. There we go, okay. really nice and red and this is where it's going to really going to look cool this is what i'm excited about so we can get under here do a quick little quick little glaze but then like the chest area quick glaze boop, boop, boop. get back here make sure to get the bottom of the elbow back there make sure this is dry under here we do another run another series of glazes under there and then chest And that's really starting to get arterial. super cool. I love this technique. I love this technique because it allows me to get a really rich red that's highlighted and shaded without it going pink, without it going orange. It still stays a true red. Uh, we can play around with the oil wash. We can play around with the edge highlights and kind of mess with the tone and everything a little bit. But um, at the end of the day, it's it's a arterial blood angels red, um, and I love it. I mean, I could not be happier with how this is turning out. Sorry, I really need to get a quick a quick disconnect for my airbrushes. I'm switching from the extreme over to the patriot because I do want to hit that with a matte varnish here at the end, uh, just to show, just to show what that, what that looks like. Cause right now it's pretty satin and that's not how, that's not in its uh, kind of final form. This isn't in the final form, you know, overall, obviously we have a lot of work to do. We have some highlighting to do. We have some shading to do. We have some washes, oil wash so you can see there there we go without that satin kind of confusing things look at that Whew. that just looks awesome not to toot my own horn not to toot my own horn but that looks awesome that is a great red i'm super proud of this red i worked really i searched high and low i worked really hard on this red um so I just couldn't be happier with with how this turns out. It's just such a nice, strong, vibrant. It's you know it's a red. It's fitting for my style. But you can see how how nice that is. It's definitely like it's definitely not like a grim dark. You know, it's definitely red. I mean these are. I'm, uh, it's, I'm glad that the chest and everything turned out as well as it did because I didn't necessarily want the backpack to be the piece that I was most proud of, but sometimes it just happens that way. You know, the backpack looks rad. So hopefully some of that will come through. I mean, the back obviously will, but hopefully some of that front part we'll be able to see once it's on the model, um, depending on the cloak and the hoses and everything. But, um, you know, it's just a really – As you know, I've been I've been uh, on a Blood Angels Blood Angels uh, endeavor for you know a few months now. Really getting hyped up about about doing that. Um, so to be able to be painting that scheme 
uh, on the Patreon on a model as cool as Mephiston is just really exciting. So let me move this away from that kind of red in the background there. Um, and then there we go. Look at that. And then let's take... Let's take this Tamiya tape off. The the cloak is going to be um, gloss varnished, like I said, to reduce that um, tackiness on the tape and reduce the chance of any kind of peeling mishaps. So, but you will be able to see... Watch out for the guitarist. There we go. Perfect. Whew. I'm gonna rush that. But there you can see kind of those two different, those two different reds uh, on the cloak and on the armor. Um, and that's really what we were going for there. Right, that's why I use two different recipes, and there you can really see it. Similar, you know, it's still a very strong red, but you can see that those are very clearly two different tones of red, two different finishes of red. Um, those are not even with the when these the bottom part here is matte varnish, you can see how different those are, um, and that's exactly that's exactly what we wanted. We didn't want those to be the same red, and we've achieved that so far. So just something to keep in mind that, you, you know, it's, it's a fun challenge. It's something you can do where you can have, you know, two different reds. We've done models with a couple different blacks, three different blacks, you know, just depending on the, the colors you choose and how you highlight them, uh, you can still get those to be distinct uh, without too much effort. I mean, this is just two different, you know, base code. This one, I mean, the armor base code is not easy, but this is two colors, you know, uh, and we get a really nice red out of it. And then this is, you know, a six, seven step process or whatever. So that being said, um, you know, we can get some really, really, really cool differentiation with that. And then, of course, we come back with the black cloak. And, man, this is starting to look very vampiric and severe and awesome. Um, so thank you. Uh, you know, next, I think that is... I think that's pretty much it for the airbrushing. I mean, you know, we'll come back and, you know, matte varnish this. I, oh, not not it for the airbrushing. Next time what we're going to do is we're going to mask off that foot there, and then I'm going to paint the base, and I'm going to get the base, like, 80% of the way there. I want to do everything that's going to be under my fist on, so, like, I'll get the base most of the way there. Um, and that way I can put my fist in on the base and I can hold the base when I paint them instead of holding the model. So part three is going to be the base. Um, it seems a little out of sequence, but there's really no way. Usually like when I'm doing a model like this, I don't really like these. I don't really like these pre-made bits. I feel it kind of restricts my basing, what I'm able to do with the base. Um, for my own Mephiston, I might try and cut that foot off and do something different, um, but that's scary, so I might not. But um, but in, with this, with the, just the way this model is put together, it would be extremely difficult and I'm not sure it's worth the effort. So we just mask that foot, paint the base. And then because we're not really doing any more airbrushing, uh, on the model. Yeah. Look at that. Oh man, I'm getting hyped. This is such a cool model. Um, you know, so we can mount them to the base and then we can, and then we can continue painting them like that. Um, God, it's cool. Anyway, so next up we're going to do the base and then we'll get back to Mephiston and we'll start, uh, we'll start getting in on, on some detailing. Um, probably some of the, you know, peripheral pieces, maybe start working on the body. I'm not sure. Um, but the nice thing about having it in sub assemblies like that is we can just like paint the shoulder pads and be done with the shoulder pads. 
paint the vials, be done with the vials. Um, you know, paint his head, we're done with the head. So uh, we'll see. I'll have to come up with a plan of attack. But uh, next time we're going to do the base and get this guy on his base and then, uh, you know, take it from there. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really did. Um, this was a lot of fun. And God, I love this red. I love painting Blood Angels, which is good because I have a lot to do for that army. <laughs> so uh, thanks again. And again, always, always, if you have any questions, just let me know and uh, leave them in the comments. Shoot me a message. Always happy to answer them. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks.